नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टुडे वी गुन टॉक अबाउट द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम्स एनुअल मीटिंग Now, having been postponed on uh, multiple occasions due to COVID pandemic, the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum this year began on Sunday in Davos with the theme "History at a Turning Point: Government Policies and Business Strategies." Now, with the world trying to recover from a global pandemic, grappling to contain, contain the devastating impact of the climate change, and navigating a geopolitical storm following the invasion. of Ukraine the World Economic Forum has never been confronted with such unprecedented global issues in its 50 year history as it is now facing in 2022 and this year also marks 35 years of WEF's collaboration with India which provides an opportunity for India to showcase its united presence including the center and state as a result from India three union ministers Piyush Goyal Mansukh Mandavia and hardeep singh puri as well as several state leaders including two chief ministers and industry representatives are attending a world economic forum's annual meeting in today's episode we will discuss and analyze all aspects of this crucial meeting and try and understand as to the agenda and also the importance of uh, points being made there in the annual meeting of wef and for more on this we we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests let me first introduce them to you beginning with we have with us uh, mr jain das gupta here joining us in the studio he is a former secretary to prime minister's uh, economic advisory council we're also joined by dr sunil kumar sena he is uh, the principal economist with the uh, india ratings and research and uh, siddhartha is also joining us who is a uh, national economic editor with the times of india welcome both of you gentlemen as well to Sunset Television. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Jain Das Gupta. Let's first start by, you know, uh, laying some ground here, trying to understand the significance of World Economic Forum because it's not just 35 years of collaboration with India, but five decades of WEF as well, and the way WEF has contributed. That's one part, and two, the challenges which it faces now. The WEF has uh, evolved itself from 1971 when it uh, first uh, was set up, and uh, though it uh, started off by uh, you know taking uh, the lead in transforming uh, the vision and viewpoints of european corporates to the american way of management initially for the first few years it then subsequently became a forum mm -hmm. for uh, 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 you know uh, <clears throat> various kinds of very momentous uh, decisions and agreements which were uh, uh, signed there including uh, to resolve international conflicts for instance yasser arafat met shimon peres uh, for a settlement of gaza and jericho in 1973 okay. and so on and so forth so now the emphasis is on sustainable development it is uh, on social inclusion and social uh, development and uh, of course climate change and working together so that uh, there is uh, uh, a chance for the uh, the citizens of the world okay. whichever country they belong to to have a minimum standard of living to have uh, uh, education to have livelihoods to have clean water and uh, the wef uh, has also played a pioneering role in uh, 2017 for instance it uh, was instrumental in setting up the coalition for uh, environment uh, epidemic um, uh, uh, cepi mm -hmm. uh, in epidemic uh, preparedness innovations you know. which later on once the covid uh, uh, pandemic broke out played a very significant role in providing vaccines to the developing countries okay so there are uh, various uh, facets to the work of the wef now as compared to what it was 50 years ago okay indeed uh, the journey has uh, been a uh, really interesting uh, now before we move on to the issues let me bring in uh, dr sena here as well uh, on this five decade long journey and then more specifically if if we can you know uh, try and look at the way wef and india has collaborated with each other yes i mean indeed uh, you know world economic uh, forum provides an important platform for india uh, not only to uh, showcase uh, you know uh, what it has achieved uh, 
uh, but also uh, it helps india to uh, really uh, take advantage of uh, some of the global leaders who are present there understand their viewpoint and also uh, you know not only collaborate with them but uh, uh through the exchange of ideas through the exchange of uh, various technology related issues uh, uh you know uh, uh, bring uh, those uh, learnings uh, to uh, the indian context so that uh, you know i mean every time it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel i mean there are a lot of things uh, that are happening uh, globally elsewhere Uh, and uh, you know uh, various countries uh, can learn from each other collaborate and then uh, can uh, also uh, this can also help uh, in terms of accelerating the innovation accelerating uh, the 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 uh, different uh, approaches uh, to development to growth uh, etc so i think uh, from that perspective it has been a great forum for uh, india and um, Uh, in fact uh, you know uh, the uh, world economic forum uh, from time to time uh, has been willing to come to india also uh, for uh, their india summit uh, so you know in that sense uh, uh, if one looks back and uh, tries to assess uh, as to uh, what really india has benefited then i can certainly say that uh, this has been a good forum for india to Uh, present itself to uh, the global audience okay 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 uh, indeed and uh, that also shows uh, the 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 kind of contingent which india has uh, this time around at world economic forum uh, trying to put it best fit uh, best foot forward uh, siddhartha you know let's let's talk about issues here now and and the overarching theme of uh, this year's annual meeting of course talks about uh, government policies and business strategies as well but when we look deeper within you know the major areas the focus areas seemingly are of course uh, the the impact of covid pandemic the impact of uh, climate change and uh, the ongoing russia ukraine conflict as well all three very important very crucial issues uh, which uh, you know uh, has an effect on almost all countries all nations across the world absolutely and just to add to it uh, inclusiveness uh, whether it's in terms of uh, fairer economies or better business yes uh okay and uh, um i mean the day started with uh, ukraine uh, president zelensky uh, zelensky's address where he talked about you know stepping up uh, help as soon as possible and you know talking about the need for a what was probably a uh you know preventive sanctions were required so he's tagged that as a concern and there there is a large theme around ukraine and uh, the post covid world and the challenges that the global economy is facing uh, whether it is in terms of food security uh, because of the ukraine crisis or the healthcare crisis which hasn't really uh, health crisis which hasn't really gone away and there are fears of you know it's resurfacing um uh, uh, periodically Okay. So yeah, these are the two or uh, three most important themes uh, that that are there. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Jandas Gupta. You know, when we look at these issues, these become really important. You you refer to some of them, and of course, uh, these recent challenges do present an unprecedented challenge for World Economic Forum, and uh, uh, of course, other global organizations as well have been trying to tackle these issues. But with the key world leaders being present here. how do you think uh, might be the way ahead from here onwards uh, on these aspects uh, and and these are as i was saying earlier these these issues have a, have a, a effect or impact on uh, everybody across the world well uh, apart from the formal uh, meetings of the wef a very large number of meetings panel discussions and presentations take place on the sidelines the wef normally has about 3000 odd uh, invited delegates because uh, participation is only by invitation but there are uh, thousands of others including ceos of uh, very large corporations uh, political leaders uh, people from academia of course uh, their numbers are not very significant and uh, civil society organizations which uh, congregate at davos 
and uh, they exchange views with each other, they debate uh, each other at various fora. So that presents a very good opportunity to understand the other's viewpoint and to also forge together a common way forward, mm -hmm. which is uh, the basic objective of the WEF. Now, whether it is achieved or not is another matter, because uh, the WEF, uh, if we take some of its uh, articles, etc., which have been published in the past, they talk about uh, a select group of leaders who may come from the political firmament, who may be from academia, civil or society organizations, definitely, and yes, the corporate world will uh, play a very important role in, uh, in tackling the issues of the economy, of politics, and uh, um, the climate change issue, environment, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. and social inclusion and development. So that is the basic uh, tenet of the WEF. And it wants to provide this kind of a forum. Uh, after that, it brings out a lot of uh, uh, publications. For instance, the Global Competitiveness Index is one of them. But there are all uh, kinds of publications which it brings out, which are very well researched and uh, place the facts before a very large audience. There are about uh, 2.5 million or more people who uh, watch the WEF proceedings in Davos. Okay. And then uh, they also read their articles, many of them. So it has a very wide audience to cater to. But, but, but how, how do you see things moving ahead? Uh, you know, because as you're pointing out, there are, of course, uh, almost 3,000 delegates and uh, uh, several hundred others as well uh, who become a very important part of these deliberations. And these questions which are, uh, uh, you know, uh, being faced by the world today on all fronts, uh, health, economy, geopolitics, climate change as well. Uh, so... Uh, of course, there will be a lot of talk, but the question is about uh, the agenda for action from here onwards. It uh, enables, uh, you know, uh, political leaders, uh, businessmen, you know, top businessmen and civil society organizations to understand each other's viewpoints, to exchange views. But uh, in the past, uh, let's say, two decades or so, if you talk about any uh, very significant uh, development or decision taken as a consequence of a WEF meeting, that I am afraid is not there. But then, the, for instance, uh, the COP uh, in Paris, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was the culmination of several meetings or a large number of meetings which had taken place in small formats, in larger formats, etc. to build up momentum. Okay. So the WEF is a very important forum to build up to that kind of momentum to give it the right push in the right direction. Okay. And as Dr. Sunil Sinha has mentioned, it is also a, a provides an opportunity to a country, especially developing countries, to mention the changes that have taken place in their policy environment so as to make investments attractive. Mm -hmm. So that is why the DPIIT, for instance, has mounted a large delegation there and it has uh, it is organizing about six panel discussions, including on asset monetization, digital economy, biotech, uh, logistics, uh, trade, uh, uh, renewable energy, and the other things in which India is very keenly interested and it provides a very good opportunity mm -hmm. for international businesses to come in and help in the development of India and help them also make profits. Okay, okay. Let, let me bring in Dr. Sina here. Uh, since you refer to uh, one of his points here, Dr. Sinha, as uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jendas Gupta is elaborating upon uh, these challenges which the world faces now, and, and we are fighting a battle on on uh, uh, several fronts: uh, economy, health, uh, health vis a vis pandemic, and uh, of course, uh, you know, geopolitics. Uh, and let's not forget the issue of climate change also. So the question here is that uh, with all these deliberations moving on. Uh, What's the way forward? What might be the tangible outcomes which you believe uh, we might have from this year's uh, annual meeting of World Economic Forum at Davos? It's very difficult to say whether uh, the discussions will lead to any firm conclusion or the way forward. But the very fact that 
uh, so many people from different walks of life are meeting each other i think uh, one of the most important and significant uh, achievement of uh, such a forum is that although it began uh, more as a you know a congregation of corporates uh, and then subsequently political leadership and now even uh, the uh, civil society uh, organizations are uh, getting representation there i think uh, the whole uh, development na- developmental narrative which was essentially a top down approach has over the years undergone a transformational change mm-hmm. where it's no longer a top down approach uh, it has to uh, take uh, the civil societies along so in a way uh, you know uh, the top down approach has exposed itself over the years whereby you know the the, the society at large is no longer uh, you know accepting uh, uh, what they are doing in in, in other words uh you know these the 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 larger society used to believe that uh, the corporates are creating values for each and every stakeholder okay. but that uh, belief has uh, 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 no longer tenable i mean uh, there are a number of conflicts we see uh, in every parts of the world uh, and uh, in fact environment is one of them uh, so what has happened over the years is that today the uh, narrative uh, has uh, somewhat changed uh, whereby uh, the society at large is also asking corporates uh, the political leaders and everyone that we just don't believe you you got to show it also so you know this is what has uh, uh, resulted in a much more i would say uh, a, a comprehensive dialogue whereby uh, different stakeholders are coming together and trying to discuss an issue so uh, even if you don't uh, come to a conclusion at least uh, you know the approach towards any problem is not unidirectional okay you are looking at uh, the whole issue from a 360 degree perspective to essentially understand that uh, uh, you know you don't get get it wrong uh, as you move along uh, the developmental path okay and 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 more the discussions are of course there'll be more ways uh, uh, to find a solution uh, let me bring in siddhartha here siddhartha you know uh, taking that point forward which dr sina made that uh, of course the discussions will be held uh, there might not be uh, uh, you know uh, the, the outcome might not be as it is desired by people uh, but again the question of uh, uh, people asking for something concrete to be shown to them in terms of the agenda for action on these various aspects uh, because now both uh, you know economy and climate change that is uh, environment and of course health and geopolitics everything is so interrelated and so mixed up right now that it is impacting every citizen of the world yes uh, that is true uh what typically happens at the annual meet is that people come and present their views and uh, uh, a lot of the people who go there to attend are interested in you know in understanding what's happening across the globe and you know whether it is what the economic outlook for the year is or what is the you know outlook for the us or the chinese economy or in terms of the investment so uh, you know it is for people to do, draw their own conclusions based on this you know uh, this wide area of discussion that takes place and it may not necessarily translate into you know an outcome in terms of a declaration or something uh, so in that sense uh, it is um, it is an open you know discussion where everyone kind of joins in and tries to uh, absorb whatever is happening around the globe okay uh, but uh, yes it does set the tone for the discussions globally uh whether it is on climate change or whether it is on you know more inclusiveness or on uh, you know what are the impediments to growth or to you know a better healthcare system uh and um, i'm sure uh, at this uh, annual meeting um, these are issues for instance on health people would like to know you know what is the experience uh, uh for various countries in terms of uh, fighting uh, the pandemic and what is the kind of preparedness that they have and you know what are the business opportunities that people are looking at okay okay but talking about more specifically india here siddhartha as uh, 
both uh, Mr. Jendas Gupta and Dr. Sinha were referring to that, you know, forums like these, meetings like these are uh, uh, very good places uh, for developing countries like ours to showcase uh, our, uh, you know, uh, strengths, uh, economic strengths more importantly, in terms of uh, attracting more investments. And of course, you know, uh, showing the world also the way we have tackled various challenges, be it uh, the issue of COVID uh, uh, pandemic or on uh, the issue of climate change as well, uh, you know, living up to our commitments. So, so how do you think uh, uh, India's move there and the way India might or will go and project itself uh, and, and the kind of, uh, you know, uh, ways we can showcase uh, to the world and attract more investments and show to them that this is the way it can be done. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we've used the forum in the past to showcase India as a very, very attractive destination, whether it was the India Everywhere campaign or, uh, you know, things like that, uh, where you have uh, various sectoral presentations, various states come in and pitch uh, themselves and investment destinations, plus the uh, union government, the central government uh, ministers who are there. For instance, this time you have uh, Mr. Piyush Goyal, Mr. Mandavia and uh, Mr. Hardeep Puri who will be there. So they would be telling investors about, you know, the kind of opportunities that say the PLI scheme offers or for that matter, how, you know, companies from across the world can come and participate in the asset monetization program. Uh, that the government has the ambitious asset monetization program or the national investment pipeline that has been created. So these are uh, pitches that I'm sure uh, these ministers would be making. And at the same time, often, you know, your position, your policies are not properly understood. Whether So this time, for instance, whether it is on Ukraine or on, you know, the food security issues, which has uh, forced us to kind of initiate certain measures such as, you know, export controls on wheat and the inflation issue. Uh, so there are at times uh, your policy uh, policy position is not properly understood to the world or misunderstood. So the uh, it also gives our ministers the platform to kind of uh, you know uh, pro provide the right perspective mm -hmm. uh, on uh, government policies apart from pitching uh, uh, for investment, whether it, as Mr. Hardi Puri would pitch for in urban infrastructure or oil or you know Mr. Mandavia would seek. You know, better quality healthcare participation from across the globe. Uh, and Mr. Puel would, I'm sure, pitch for India as a bigger and more attractive investment destination at a time when, you know, some of the countries in the region uh, are uh, seeing, um, you know, lower interest than what uh, they earlier had. And, you know, India is seeking to position itself as, a, uh, a, a, as an alternate investment destination to, for com companies to diversify their production mix. Okay, okay. And in fact, uh, to realize that goal, uh, they're also accompanied by several state leaders, including uh, two chief ministers and uh, various uh, CEOs there as well. Thank you so much, uh, Siddhartha, for sharing your views, uh, Dr. Sunil Sinha as well, and Mr. Jantas Gupta for elaborating on uh, what exactly might be expected at the World Economic Forum, uh, five decades of its uh, journey, and of course, uh, 35 years of collaboration with India, and why discussions like these or annual meetings like these are really important, specifically in today's age and time when the world is facing various challenges at various fronts. We'll come back again with a detailed analysis of what transpired at the WEF's annual meeting and other important issues as well. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.